Welcome to this video introduction to network analysis with Giphy. This open source software is one of the best for network visualization. I find it easy to use. It leads us quite organically through the analysis process. This tutorial is based on two data sets to produce two different types of networks. You'll find these files as well as the complete process on the following page. I put the link in the description. Note that this is simply a voiceover of my existing tutorial, and the version with the audio is very often requested. Gephi has been updated several times since then, but even if it brings important changes to the performance, the interface is still the same, and so this tutorial is still valid. But I'm planning new videos on Gephi in the near future, so subscribe to this channel to stay informed. Before you start, make sure you watch this video in high definition to see the details and you can turn on the subtitles to make sure you understand. So this is our first example, a one mode network. Open Gephi. This is an older version. Now we have the 0.9.7. And before starting a new project, we will import uh, a plugin that we'll use for this example. This plugin is the GeoLayout plugin. You will find it in the available plugin panel and search for geo layout. Here uh, in the video, I'm also importing the Nova app because it's something that was not built in Giphy at this time, but it is it is uh, nowadays. So just geo layout and install. Accept the terms, and then it will restart Giphy with this plugin. Restart now, finish and reopen. Now you can create a new project and we'll use the first uh, data set. Go to the data laboratory and click on import spreadsheet. You will then navigate to your data set, the nodes1.csv. Specify that we have semicolons between the values and import all the columns by and specify the type of data you're importing there. Now we have this CSV uh, in our data table and we'll simply import also the edges table, which is edges1.csv. And now we have this second file imported as well. Now all the action uh, takes place on the overview panel. Um, this is the place where the software will produce an overview of the graph, specialized randomly and completely unreadable at, at, at first. Uh, let's start by giving nodes a size proportional to their degree, the number of connections. In the ranking panel of the left column, uh, select nodes and then this red diamond and then select degree in the rolling menu and enter the minimal and maximal value. Uh, I propose 10 to 100. Then let's specialize the graph. That's the main, main part. Uh, let's begin with a specialization that gives more space to the graph but maintain uh, the graph in a decided area, the Früchtemann Heingold with the same values as uh, uh, in this model, 20,000, 10, 10. This visualization disposes nodes in a gravitational way. You, you're already able to dis distinguish community, more densely connected part of the network. Let the function run until the graph is stabilized. Use a little blue magnifying glass at the bottom left of the graph panel to recenter the zoom. Then I propose to use the force atlas 2, another layout algorithm to disperse groups and give space around larger nodes. Be careful because the, the parameters you enter significantly alter the final appearance. Uh, my proposition here is to, is to check prevent overlap and change the scaling to 50. Let the function run until the graph is mostly stabilized. Now let's have a look at the right side of this overview panel. You have this little statistics section. Uh, it will be very important to, to, to add some, some more information to the, to the graph by giving the nodes new attributes so that we can inf influence the, the size, color uh, of all these dots in the middle and also uh, simply to explore the graph. 
uh, in the statistics panel, click on average weighted degree to calculate uh, uh, this value for, for every node. Uh, the degree is uh, 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 not only uh, calculated uh, depending on simply the number of connection in, in, in this metric, but also uh, what is uh, uh, incoming and outcoming. And uh, uh, it's taking into account the, the value uh, uh, and the size or the weight of, of the edges. Now that these values are calculated, uh, new attributes are available in the ranking panel. Select the color icon and choose weighted in degree to color nodes according to the number of incoming edges. I fine tune a bit the colors so uh, that the, the, the scale uh, will, be, will be more readable, especially uh, because I know that few nodes have a highly uh, weighted in degree. And now, uh, uh, the result is that the bigger the biggest nodes, the, those with a with a high uh, degree, uh, are not necessarily those with a, the biggest weighted in degree. So some nodes have lots of connections, but some of these connections could also be out connections, which means that now we have a color that that gives us a different information from from the the, the size of the of the node. At the bottom right of the, the graph display, you'll find a little sign which allows you to develop a new panel. In, in Label, choose Nodes to add the labels to your nodes and set their font, color, and size. If needed, for example, if, if your data don't, don't have any label column, click on, click on Configure to, to, to set the column content you want to, to get displayed. The ID may be used as a label, for example. And now we will uh, try to finalize the graph. We'll go to Preview for trimming the final details. Um, and unlike during previous stages, changing settings in this menu is reversible and do not affect the, the structure of the graph. We're really just fine tuning the visualization itself. Here uh, um, you find a few kind of suggestion of, of settings uh, for a good rendering, um, like setting the, the edges opacity to 70% for a better contrast with the nodes. And you always need to, to hit refresh uh, to get uh, a new result. And it can it can take a few seconds to update after is each change. At the bottom of this preview column, you find an export link. Note that exporting a PNG produces figure with a poor resolution. You may want to opt for an SVG, uh, which have the advantage of being modifiable by your own uh, image or drawing software. So we went through this, this analysis process extremely quickly. And uh, of course, uh, we want now to, to add some more information and to, to, uh, to come back to the, uh, to the uh, overview panel. Because of course, visualization is only one step. Uh, network analysis often uh, needs other mathematical means to provide the researcher with a satisfactory result. Feel free to, to explore all the buttons of the statistics menu, for example, by playing with degree measures, density, path lengths, modula modularity. Here I, I propose to use this this uh, calculation called called modularity, uh, which is a way to to highlight communities in, the, in in the graph. So in this overview page, you just click on statistics modularity, click on run to display uh, this this little window, and you choose a, a resolution between 0, 1 and two, and you you click OK, and the next step takes place in the partition menu situated in the in the left column. You select nodes and modularity class in the rolling menu. You'll be then able to modify the colors attributed to the to the detected uh, communities by clicking on, on them. Do not hesitate to repeat this operation with many resolutions. That that's an that's a that's a research process. You you want you want to be able to understand what what modularity does. Another type of calculation could be uh, the bitterness centrality, which uh, measures all the shortest path between every pairs of nodes of the network, and then count how many times a node is on the shortest path between two others. It's a very interesting metric uh, in, 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 in the case of a network of, of letters, for example, uh, uh, letters that are sent and received because it allows the, the researcher to detect the, the, the people that occupy an intermediate position between two other people uh, uh, or groups. In the statistics panel, you click on, on network diameter. And uh, like the, the weighted in degree before, um, you, it's up to you to find a colorful way to highlight uh, nodes that have a high bitterness centrality. It quickly, it quickly appeared that nodes with a high degree or weighted degree does not always have a high betweenness. During the import, you've noticed that every node was given a, a latitude and a longitude. 
the Geo Layout plugin will help you display the nodes in a geographical way. In the Layout panel, select Geo Layout and give it a scale of 20,000. Be sure that the plugin understands correctly that latitude is latitude and longitude as a longitude. And set the projection to Mercator. Uh, you can adapt that, you can change, of course, but um, in, in this tutorial, I will provide you um, a, a Mercator uh, background. As nodes are not grouped on a geographical coordinate, you'll have to give them some space. Use the uh, Novel App Layout plugin uh, to avoid them overlapping. A margin of uh, 5.0 is enough with a chosen map scale. In the preview panel, check the final appearance of your uh, 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 network map and export it in SVG. You will then be able to import it on a background map. If you're familiar with Inkscape, Download the map provided in the tutorial that has been created to fit with the chosen scale and Mercator projection. Open it and after having imported your network in it, select the city names layer and bring it to the front to make it readable. Feel free, feel free to try the same map with modularity. The result shows that communities are strongly related to geographic particularities. And then in the very end, uh, do not forget to save your project. Uh, exporting and, and saving the, the image file is, of course, uh, a nice result, but of course you need to save the Gephi uh, uh, file as well so that you'll be able to, to come back to, to, to Gephi and change a few things and, and come back work on, on your project. Let's move on to our second uh, uh, data set. The second data set is a two-mode network, which means that it's a network of two different kind of entities. Uh, in, in, in the visual example here, you see the, the, the blue dots and the, and the white dots. Imagine that it could be a, a network of, I don't know, uh, companies and people, uh, and, and you will uh, have people affiliated to companies. To deal with uh, two mode networks, you will need to install a new plugin. So open, open the plugin window and look for multi-mode network transformation. You'll need to to install it and to restart Gephi. Now you can create a new project in the start window and uh, go once again to, to the data laboratory, click on import spreadsheet to open the import window and import your first file. It's the file called nodes2.csv. Specify that the separation between your column uh, is expressed by a semicolon and do not forget to inform Gephi that the file you import is containing nodes. Then press next and fill uh, the import settings form as proposed. Inform Gephi that our cat variable is a string. This variable will be useful to separate members and companies in a further step. Follow the same procedure but with the edges file, uh, edges2.csv, and fill the form in the following manner. Specify the semicolon and inform Gephi that you are importing the edges. Fill in the last fields and uncheck create missing nodes because you've already imported them. Now go back to the overview panel. You're supposed to have 110 nodes and uh, 142 edges. It's a much smaller network, but a, of a very different nature. In the ranking panel, give a size to your nodes here according to their degree between 10 and 50. Uh, in a tumor network, the degree centrality may not be a very interesting value because of the structural bias brought by the two different categories of nodes. In our case, the companies will be naturally much more connected than the members but this is uh, uh, just the first step. We just try to, to dis distinguish visually the two categories, which is, which is why we'll go now in the partition panel, refresh the menu to make the nodes attribute appear, and, and use the cat uh, um, category to give a very different colors to the, to, the two, uh, to the two type of nodes, members and institution, and apply it to your network. Now deploy the network using the, the Force Atlas 2 algorithm prevent node overlapping and, and scale, it, scale it to, to 50. Your graph is now visually readable and looks very similar to many organizations network. It's a, it's a relatively small network, so it, it looks quite good like that. You can, you can stay like that if you want, um, but it's also interesting to, to use this multi-mode network projection plugin to see how to go from a two-mode network to a one-mode network to project the graph. So you now use the multi-mode network projection panel available through the, the plugin you, you downloaded and load attributes. You'll now project the institution on the members. If two members have an edge linking them with the same institution, they will now have a, a direct edge between them. Select the right attribute type, cat, 
and set the matrix as proposed here, member, institution, and then institution member. They must be symmetric with the type of node you want to keep at the beginning and the end. Check the remove edges and remove nodes buttons in order to clean the graph from the old uh, uh, institutions, nodes, and edges. And finally, click on run. Now the graph look, looks very different. Uh, uh, projection is always uh, um, something that creates a lot of edges. All the nodes that had uh, uh, connections to this institution or to the same institution now are connected together. So it creates a lot of density. Um, you can calculate the new degree centrality of the nodes by clicking on average weighted degree in the statistics panel. And then in the ranking panel, you can apply this measure to the nodes. Uh, um, then the new degree may be very different from the, the degree in the Tumen original network. In the statistics panel, click on network diameter to calculate the bitterness centrality of your nodes. Then use this measure to color the nodes in such a network of people working in different committees or institutions or companies. Knowing who's at the intersection of two groups may be very important for a human resources officer, etc. You can also change the color of the edges to make the multiple relations uh, more visible in, in the final display. I suggest here to, to, to give a strong black to all the edges that are bigger than one. And then of course, specialized the graph once again, because it kept the positions of the node of the nodes before the projection from a two mode to one mode network. So you can use Friedman Reingold or, or Fawcett plus two. And once again, if you want to export this result, you go to the preview panel. You change the color of the of the edges so that it reflects the changes you made before and you export it. Note that depending on your approach, you may want to, to uh, use this kind of network to analyze the, the neighbors of a specific node. So you will, you will first uh, um, gray all the, the nodes Uh, and then use the little paint bucket on the left of the graph area and play with the tools on the top of this menu. First, paint the neighbors of neighbors uh, of the nodes that is interesting to you. Um, and then the, the, the neighbors of this node. In our example, the red node, member of only one committee, is directly connected to 10 colleagues, which are themselves connected to 49 other individuals. And then once again, you can export this result with the preview panel. And do not forget to save this new Gephi project as a Gephi file. Thank you for your attention.